Hello students, welcome to e Shala. I am Dr. Shakila from Avinashalingam University speaking on preservation by irradiation. Food irradiation is being considered as a feasible food processing expertise for providing a safe food. Studies pertaining to the wholesomeness and nutritional adequacy of irradiated foods date back to the 1950s and were frequently associated with the use of radiation to sterilize foods. The process of irradiation involves exposing food to controlled levels of ionizing radiation for a specific time to achieve desirable objectives. Ionizing radiation is that energy that can be transmitted without direct contact to the source of energy capable of free flowing electrons from their atomic bonds in the targeted food. This treatment is used to preserve all types of foods, reduce the risk of foodborne illness, prevent the spread of invasive pests and delay or eliminate sprouting or ripening. Preservation by irradiation. Irradiation destroys disease causing bacteria and reduces the risk of foodborne illness. Irradiation is also a viable pest control method providing security for traded fresh produce by preventing insects and other pests from developing and reproducing. It is this capacity to control pests including those of quarantine significance which has led many countries to introduce irradiation applications. The process of food irradiation exposes the food to ionizing radiation for a prescribed quantity of energy to be absorbed. It makes the food safer to eat by destroying pathogens which is very much similar to the process of pasteurization. Radiation disrupts the biological processes that lead to decay and the ability to sprout. Being a cold process, radiation can be used to pasteurize and sterilize foods without causing changes in freshness and texture of food unlike heat. Further, unlike chemical fumigants, radiation does not leave any harmful toxic residues in foods and is more effective and can be used to treat packaged commodities also. Radiation sources. The type of radiation used in processing materials is limited to radiations from high energy gamma rays, x-rays and accelerated electrons. These radiations are also referred to as ionizing radiations because their energy is high enough to dislodge electrons from atoms and molecules and to convert them to electrically charged particles called ions. Looking at a concept of ionizing and non-ionizing radiations, the radiation is called ionizing radiation when it is at a sufficiently high frequency such as those of gamma rays and x-rays that it results in the production of charged particles which we also refer as ions in the material that it comes in contact with. Ionizing radiation has higher energy, high enough to change atoms to form an ion but not high enough to split atoms and cause exposed objects to become radioactive. This appears to be the greatest advantage. Thus, the sources of radiation allowed for food processing cannot make food radioactive. Non-ionizing -radi radiation such as that from microwaves does not produce ions but can create heat under moist conditions and is routinely used for purposes such as cooking and reheating of foods. Ionizing radiation for food processing is limited to high energy photons such as gamma rays of radionuclides namely cobalt 60 or cesium 137 x-rays from machine sources with energies up to 5 MeV 
and accelerated electrons with energy up to 10 million volts generated by electron and accelerating machines. These kinds of ionizing radiation are preferred due to the following reasons. The suitable food preservative effects do not generate radioactivity in foods or packaging materials and finally they are available at a cost as commercial use of the irradiation process. The strength of the source and the length of the time the food is exposed to the ionizing energy determine the irradiation dose which is usually measured in grays or kilograys. Gamma rays and x-rays like radio waves, microwaves, ultraviolet and visible light rays form part of the electromagnetic spectrum and occur in the short wavelength, high energy region of the spectrum and have the greatest penetrating power. They have the same properties and effects on materials, their origin being the main difference between them. X-rays with varying energies are generated by special kinds of machines. Gamma rays with specific energies come from spontaneous disintegration of radionuclides mentioned above. The effects of gamma radiation are shown in the figure and looking at the facilities required for gamma irradiation, naturally occurring and man-made radionuclides cesium and cobalt also called radioactive isotopes or radioisotopes emit radiation as they spontaneously revert to a stable state. The time taken by a radionuclide to decay to half the level of radioactivity originally present is called as the half-life. This is specific for each radionuclide of a particular element. Only certain radiation sources can be used in food irradiation and as mentioned above, these are the radionuclides cobalt-60 or cesium-137. It is produced by neutron bombardment in a nuclear reactor of the metal cobalt-59 and then doubly encapsulated in a stainless steel reactor to prevent any leakage during its use in an irradiator. The gamma rays produced are highly penetrating and can be used to treat full boxes of fresh or frozen food. On the other hand, cesium-137 is the only other gamma emitting radionuclei suitable for industrial processing of materials. However, there is no supply of commercial quantities of cesium-137. Cobalt-60 has therefore become the only choice for gamma radiation source. The figure below is a schematic diagram of a commercially available gamma irradiator. Here, the sealed sources are stored in water and raised into the air to irradiate a product that may be moved into the irradiation room on a conveyor system. X-rays of various energies are produced when a beam of accelerated electrons bombards a metallic target. Although X-rays have a good penetrability into the food, the efficiency of conversion from electrons to X-rays is generally less than 10% and this is the reason for the restricted use of this type of radiation so far. X-rays are generated by machines and can be switched off. In this case, electrons are accelerated at a metallic target such as tungsten or gold to generate a stream of X-rays. The figure below shows a electronic gun which beams the electronic beams and produces the uh, uh, electronic beams. High energy electron beams can be produced from machines capable of accelerating electrons to near the speed of light by means of a linear accelerator. Since electrons cannot penetrate very far into food compared with gamma radiation or x-rays, 
they can be used only for treatment of thin packages of food and free flowing or falling grains. Electronic beams also referred to as e-beams are produced by machines and not by radioactive material. They are generated by accelerating a stream of electrons which are focused into narrow beam spots. This was indicated in the figure 4b. Now as the foot travels perpendicular to the beam direction, this spot of incident electrons is scanned across the foot. E-beam radiation offers three distinct advantages compared with the gamma rays. The first advantage is the need to carry radioactive materials around the country is eliminated. Secondly, it can be turned off when not in use and the last advantage being the electronic beam is characterized by the low penetration and high dosage rates. Hence, it performs best when used on low density, uniformly packaged products. Food packed in crates or boxes is placed on conveyor belts and moved into the irradiator where it is exposed to the radiation source. High energy waves pass through the food, exciting the electrons in both the food and any pests or pathogens. When the electrons absorb enough energy, they break away from their atoms, leaving back positively charged centers behind. Irradiation now disrupts or breaks the molecular structure. It kills or reduces the number of bacteria and yeasts. It delays the formation of mold formation and sterilizes or kills parasites, insects, eggs and larvae. The effectiveness of processing of food by ionizing radiation depends on proper delivery of absorbed dose and its reliable measurement. It is of utmost importance for food destined for international trade that the dose determination is carried out accurately. Radiation dose is the quantity of radiation energy absorbed by the food as it passes through the radiation field during processing. It is measured using a unit called the gray. International health and safety authorities have endorsed the safety of irradiation for all foods up to a dose of 10 kilo gray. Recent evaluation of an inter international expert study group appointed by the FAO and WHO showed that foods treated according to good manufacturing practices commonly referred to as the GMPs at any dose above 10 kg in food industries is also safe for consumption making irradiation parallel to heat treatment of food. Radiation processed food cannot be recognized by sight, smell, taste or touch. This appears to be the greatest advantage of radiated foods. Codex Alimentarius Commission has endorsed a green irradiation logo as per the PFA 5th Amendment Rules 1994. All packages of irradiated foods to be marketed in India will be labeled with this logo along with the words processed by irradiation method and the date of irradiation, license number of the facility and the purpose of irradiation would be present on the package. Consumers will have a free choice to buy irradiated or non-irradiated commodity. Discussing the physical effects of irradiation on food, irradiation even at low doses is not suitable for all as it can produce undesirable odors and flavors in certain foods and even tissue damage in some fruits and vegetables. During exposure to radiation, food and water absorb energy, most of which is used in the generation of molecules that are unstable and reactive 
and these are collectively referred to as radiolytic products. These short lived molecules chemically react with each other and surrounding molecules cause damage to biological cells including those of contaminated microorganisms or insects. Radiolytic products are not unique to irradiated food. However, with identical products being found in food that has been cooked, frozen or pasteurized and even in unprocessed foods. Irradiation also disrupts some of the chemical bonds in foods and in pests. While this disruption is inconsequential to the food, it is considered reduces the chances of survival and proliferation or multiplication of the contaminating pests or microorganisms. Now looking at the effect of irradiation on the nutritional content of food. The effect of irradiation on the nutritional quality of food is similar and in some cases less than that for some other preservation methods. Only minor changes in some vitamins such as B1, C, A and E occur while carbohydrates, fats and proteins remain largely unaffected by low or medium doses. However, nutritional changes in food due to irradiation are dependent on factors such as temperature, radiation dose, packaging, environment and storage. For example, irradiation of frozen food or food in an oxygen free environment actually minimizes any nutrient loss. Applications of irradiation. Radiation processing technology can be used for following applications. 1. Inhibition of sprouting in bulbs and tubers. This infestation of food grains and pulses. Extending shelf life under recommended conditions of storage. Ensuring microbiological safety. Overcoming quarantine barriers to international trade. The application of low doses of radiation can arrest sprouting of potatoes and onions. As a result, storage losses due to sprouting of the tubers and bulbs and their dehydration can be reduced substantially, thereby increasing their storage periods. Adoption of new technology, especially for onions, could mean significant benefits to this country that is the largest producer of onions in the world. The development of high yielding, short duration and disease resistant varieties of potato in recent years has led to increased production and consequently problems of storage and conservation have been reduced. Chemical sprout inhibitors are difficult to apply and are not always effective. Sprout inhibiting dose of radiation is also effective in destroying tuber moth which is a devastating pest of the potato tuber. Irradiation therefore offers a satisfactory solution to the storage problems of potatoes. Low dose irradiation also completely kills or sterilizes common grain pests and even the eggs deposited inside the grains. Moreover, only a single radiation exposure of grains is sufficient for disinfestations. This therefore is ideally suited for large scale operations thereby offering substantial economic benefits. Irradiation can also serve as an effective process for disinfestations of certain pre-packed cereal products like atta, rava and premixes. Irradiation is effective in delaying the natural processes of ripening in fruits. Thus, shelf life of mangoes can be extended by, by about a week and that of bananas up to two weeks. This could improve the scope for internal trade and augmented export of these commercially important fruits of India.
Furthermore, gamma radiation can eliminate the seed weevil, which is an insect that lodges deep inside the stone of a mango. Living organisms deprived of intact DNA or RNA will cease to function. Thus, parasites such as tapeworms and disease causing microorganisms such as salmonella species, both of which will occasionally be found in raw food, can be controlled or destroyed by irradiation. In similar or in much the same way, ionizing radiations can slow down cell-based processes such as early ripening in fruits which could lead to premature decay. Likewise, it is effective against insects and molds which if uncontrolled can destroy grain stalks. Irradiation is thus an effective means of controlling all biological processes which would render the food supply unpalatable or unsafe. Besides the Food and Drug Association, the US Center for Disease Control and World Health Organization has recognized food irradiation as a safe process. Internationally, it must be labeled and bear the Rajura symbol with a disclosure statement such as treated with irradiation or treated by irradiation. The most important aspect of irradiated food is the cost. Any processing that would lead to the addition of cost of food, in most cases, however, food prices may not necessarily rise just because a product has been treated. Many variables affect food costs and one of them is cost of processing. But processing also brings benefits to consumers in terms of availability, storage life, distribution and improved hygiene of food. Irradiation costs may range from 25 paise to 50 paise per kilogram for a low dose application such as sprout inhibition of potato and onion and insect disinfestations in cereals and pulses. It costs from 1 rupee to 3 rupees per kilogram for high dose applications such as treatment of spices for microbial decontamination. Now looking at the merits of irradiation over other conventional methods, food irradiation technology has unique merits over conventional methods of preservation such as scanning, dehydration, salting, etc. as this process does not lead to loss of flavor, odor, texture and freshness. Unlike chemical fumigants, irradiation does not leave any harmful toxic residues in food and is more effective. It is efficient and can be used to treat pre-packed commodities. Since gamma rays have high penetrating power, spices can be irradiated after packaging irrespective of the size of the carton. Poor post-harvest practices including inadequate storage and preservation facilities as well as adverse climatic conditions can cause heavy losses in India's agricultural and marine produce. Food irradiation promises to offer an effective means for minimizing these losses, thereby increasing their availability and stimulating exports. It can make Indian agricultural produce globally competitive. Export development authorities, commodity boards, food industry, farmers, traders and exporters of agricultural commodities can be benefited from the use of radiation processing technology. To conclude, we have seen the different merits, the cost effectiveness and various other kinds of conventional processes of irradiation of food. Irradiation of food is therefore one of the most effective ways of food preservation which inactivates microorganisms and insect pests. 
irradiation also produces irreversible effects on the microorganisms and pests by disrupting their cellular structure but without causing any kinds of damages to food materials. This is the maximum advantage that a processing technology can provide to foods especially when the foods are in their perishable stages. Effective irradiation treatment on food is associated with an effective packaging material which also includes the packaging environment, the type of the packaging material, the films of the packaging material and the storage environment in which the cartons or packages are kept. This would ensure a better storage life of the irradiated product without giving way to increased production of sprouts or pest multiplication in the processed food products. Totally, it performs all technical functions of packaging along with resistant to radiations. With compliance obtained from international sources of FAO, WHO, USDA and the like, India also is beginning to adopt the process of irradiation to perishables as well as to packaged foods. This would enormously increase the availability of foods within the country as well as boost export levels of commodities.